In this video, we're walking through the symptoms, treatment, and pathophysiology of tuberculosis so you can understand it faster and easier to pass your nursing school exams. Let's dive in. So let's start with what tuberculosis actually is. It is an airborne, very contagious bacterial infection caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It infects mainly the lungs, but it can affect other body systems as well, including the kidneys, the brain, and the spine. Now, here's the tricky part. Not everyone infected with tuberculosis gets sick. So let's talk about that. Now you know that I always love to break down pathophysiology into simple steps for you to follow. This is exactly how we teach inside the Nursing SOS membership community as well. I just think it helps so much to help you learn it easier and faster and it also makes patho way less complicated. So let's break down the pathophysiology of tuberculosis down into simple steps. So that mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is the bacteria that causes TB, it gets in hailed into the lungs and then two things can happen. The immune system recognizes it and encapsulates it, so an active infection doesn't occur at that time. We'll call this step number one or an active infection occurs. But even if it's encapsulated, then the mycobacteria still have a chance at causing an infection at a later date. And the other thing that can happen is that the mycobacteria gets past the immune system and infects the lungs, causing a tubercle or lesion to form. We'll call this step number two. And then the tubercle can follow a few tracks. We'll call this step number three. It can either heal, leaving scar tissue tissue advance to a granuloma and eventually heal, also leaving scar tissue, or it could advance to necrosis and death of that lung tissue. Because of the vasculature of the lungs, it can spread to the bloodstream into different parts of the body, forming the same tubercles as well, which is now step number four. This is more common in children and immunocompromised patients. Now, there are two forms of TB, latent and active. Latent TB means that the patient has been exposed, but the immune system is doing its job. It encapsulated the bacteria and it is keeping the TB at bay and preventing it from becoming an active infection. The patient is not contagious and they do not have any symptoms if they have latent TB. To determine if it is latent, the patient would have a positive skin test, but a negative chest x-ray and sputum culture. So yes, their skin is reacting because they have been exposed, so their immune system is reacting, but they are not contagious and they cannot spread TB to other people. Most likely, a latent TB infection will still need treatment in order to prevent the evolution to active TB in the future. Active TB is when the immune system can no longer hold that TB back and it becomes an active infection. The patient will have a positive skin test along with a positive chest x-ray or sputum culture. Most of the time, they will have symptoms as well. Treatment and airborne precautions are necessary as well as contact tracing to help prevent the spread of TB. So now that we know the pathophysiology of tuberculosis and really what's going on inside the body, now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of TB. Now, if you're a nursing SOS member, then you know from our four core method, which is one of our study frameworks that we use to help you learn things faster, we always want to be connecting the signs and symptoms of a disorder, whatever disorder we're learning about, connect it back to the pathophysiology. This is the best way to learn them, my friend. You do not want to just memorize the list of signs and symptoms for a disorder and then call it a day, right? Because what will happen is that you'll get to your exam and all of the things that you just tried to memorize, it will just get really jumbled up in your brain and you won't be able to critically think and apply it on your nursing school exam. Nursing exams do not test you on how well you memorize things, right? They test you on how well you can critically think, which is why we spend so much time breaking these things down and giving you the key critical thinking points for these disorders inside the Nursing SOS membership community. So if you are interested in learning things faster and learning things easier in nursing school and you want me to teach you everything that you need to know to pass your exams, definitely check out the Nursing SOS membership community. The link is down below in the description for you to get all the details. So we'll connect the signs and symptoms back to the TB pathophysiology so you can actually understand it and critically think about it. So like we just talked about, latent TB may not have any symptoms 
except for a positive purified protein derivative test or a PPD tuberculin skin test, which is one of the main tests for TB. It's also called the MAN2 tuberculin skin test or the TST. So that may be the only symptom for latent TB since the bacteria is encapsulated in the body and there isn't any active infection. This TB skin test, it checks for a protein derivative of TB via an intradermal injection. This is then read by a healthcare professional 48 hours after it is administered. If it's greater than 15 millimeters, then it is positive. And it's really important for you to know that a positive result does not mean that the patient has active TB. It does mean that the patient has been exposed in some fashion and further monitoring and treatment are warranted for that. To determine if it's latent, the patient would have a positive TB skin test, but a negative chest x-ray and sputum culture. So their skin is reacting because they have have been exposed and their immune system is reacting to it, but they are not contagious and they can't spread TB to other people. Most likely, a latent TB infection will still need treatment in order to prevent the evolution to active TB. And it's important to note because the NCLEX loves to test you on this, the tuberculosis vaccine, it's called the BCG vaccine. It's the vaccine for tuberculosis that's given in foreign countries to children. It will create a positive TB skin test result, but does not mean that they have active TB or have even been exposed. This is a vaccine that is given to children in hopes of preventing an active TB infection, so it will show up as a positive result if they have received this vaccine, but it doesn't mean that they have ever been exposed to TB. Other lab tests the patient may have done are a chest x-ray and a sputum culture to help determine if the TB is latent or active. The chest x-ray and the sputum culture will come back positive if the patient has active TB. And the sputum culture is collected three different days, usually first thing in the morning. Any positive sputum culture indicates active TB that needs to be properly treated. They may also have a quantifieron TB gold test or the QFT done, which is a rapid TB blood test that will be positive if the patient has a latent or active TB infection, but it cannot differentiate between latent or active TB. The symptoms of active TB are a prolonged cough, usually is present for over a month and is usually very harsh and can cause the patient to cough up blood. Think back to what is happening here. The tuberculosis bacteria caused the formation of a tubercle in the lungs, which is either leaving scar tissue and it's healing, or it's progressing to granulation tissue and necrosis. So the harsh cough and the coughing of blood it makes sense when you think about what is actually happening inside the body, the pathophysiology of TB, right? And then the cough may progress to chest pain and difficulty breathing as those tubercles form. The patient may also have overall weakness and malaise as their body tries to fight off the infection, fight off the bacteria. And they may develop a fever and night sweats and have unexplained weight loss and a poor appetite. This is all due to their body just working in overdrive, working overtime to try to help fight off that active infection. So one of the key things to remember here though is that latent TB or TB that is not currently causing an active inf infection, it will not have any symptoms other than that positive PPD test. Now once the testing has been completed and treatment has started, you'll want to continue to assess their symptoms and monitor their progress. Monitor their respiratory status and their vital signs, noting if their cough is getting better or worse, if they're coughing up sputum or blood and if they're having any chest pain or tightness. You'll also assess their energy level and their weight to make sure that they are getting enough calories and fluids to meet their body's demands. Remember, tuberculosis is a respiratory infection and it will compromise the body's ability to oxygenate the body. The less oxygen the body has and the more the lungs are compromised, the harder it is for the body to function properly. Now let's talk about the tuberculosis treatment and the nursing interventions that you'll need to do. When you are caring for a patient who has a high risk of exposure and possible active TB or does have confirmed active TB, it is very important to remember that it is an airborne disease and requires airborne precautions to limit the spread. They should be in a negative pressure room and you'll need to follow all those airborne 
important precautions, including wearing an N95 mask, and then the patient should wear a surgical mask anytime they need to leave their room. Treatment for TB is long, usually at least six months, and it is very important that the patient is compliant with the treatment to make sure that the bacteria are completely gone. The patient will be isolated either in the hospital or at home to make sure that it doesn't spread elsewhere, and the patient can come off isolation after three negative sputum cultures or if they have been very compliant with their medication for at least two weeks without symptoms. Medications for TB are pyrazinamide, which is an antibiotic that will help to kill that mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacteria that caused the infection in the first place. And then ethambutol may also be used, which will help to prevent further replication and growth of the vector bacteria. And then rifampin and isoniazid or INH will kill the bacteria. But something to let your patients know about is that rifampin will turn body fluids orange, which may be alarming for them. So encourage them to still take it as prescribed. Close monitoring of compliance with medications and monitoring for side effects is very important. We want to help to reduce medication side effects as much as possible so that the patient is more likely to be compliant with the treatment. And if if you want to deep dive on these medications and you want to learn them faster, be sure to check out the medication database that we have for you inside the Nursing SOS membership community. The patient should also be educated on eating a healthy diet and drinking lots of fluids to help clear that infection. They should make sure that they're getting lots of protein and iron and vitamin C along with plenty of fluids so that their body can fight off this infection and stay as functioning as possible. Now, you know that there's a ton of disorders to learn in nursing school, right? Like we talked about, it's so important to understand the pathophysiology first so that you can pass your exams. But how do you actually do that? I walk you through exactly how to do that in this video to learn patho faster so you can pass your nursing school exams and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.